Firstly, let me acknowledge the tremendous strides we have made as a country towards achieving access, equity, quality, and relevance. I must also admit that we have not been faithful to all of our commitments. However, my hope is that the lessons learned have made us into stronger and better educators and persons. I am also privileged to be a part of the great transformation that took place in the education system the first decade after independence. That process of transformation was designed to expand access to secondary education. Prior to the program in the 70s, a number of children would exit the all-age school at age 14 plus, such that a part of the Jamaican parlance was that these children out school. When a child out school, that child would be sent to learn a trade, to tailor, a dressmaker, or a barber, or the child would sit idly by doing nothing. But that was really the end of the education, formal education for that child. But something great happened in the 70s. Under a World Bank program, 50 junior secondary schools were constructed. However, these schools fell short because they catered only to children 12 to 14 years old. The situation of children leaving school at 14 plus still existed. And then, with a second World Bank loan, all these 50 schools were expanded to become new secondary schools. New secondary schools provided an answer to the problem. The 30,000 children who would normally leave school at age 14 now had a home. They had a home not only for one year, but for two years where they pursued grades 10 and 11. Whereas only 10% of children, 15 to 16 years old, were enrolled in schools during the 1970. By 1985, 88% of children 15 to 16 years old were enrolled. This for me is one of the most significant achievement of the education system. The schools were designed to prepare the children for the world of work and consequently the curriculum was biased towards techni technical, vocational and pre-vocational subjects. I am quite aware that Jamaica still places a high premium on grammar school education and maybe that has contributed to the low social currency placed on these schools. Let us pause for a minute to consider how the introduction of these schools have contributed to a change in the landscape. Firstly, Hartrust NTA gets most of its students or trainees from the graduates of new secondary school. Secondly, when you enter on a site, a housing development site and construction site, almost all the plumbers, electricians, welders, masons are new secondary school graduates. Further, when you look at the proliferation of grill work, decorative metal work for windows, doors, blinds, fences for protection, then one must admit that these institutions have made their mark on this country. I am very pleased to have heard the news just last week that the entrance to all schools, their performance has been greatly increased. This, of course, will augur well for new secondary schools. The crop of children entering these schools will now have a better chance not only to pursue vocational and pre-vocational subjects, but also academic subjects. It is my hope also that these schools will one day stand tall because 50 years may not be enough for one to become a traditional school, but give them time.
like all other schools, I'm confident that they will excel. Thank you.